Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a card for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. So I wanted to use the Terrace Floral Embossing Folder and Coordinating Cutting Die Set from Simon Says Stamp. So I have my Spellbinders Platinum 6 and I have the new platform system. I've shown it in a bunch of videos. Um, I've been experimenting more with what sandwich works best for specifically Simon's embossing folders and I've switched it up again. <laughs> and what I find works best is the platform with the platform top and then uh, my metal shim. So I, like always, I'll have links. Um, but regardless of what machine you're using, there's sandwich options listed with the product listing for different machines, etc. So you can check that out. And then you just got to experiment a little bit. But the biggest thing always is to remember, don't force it. If your machine, you know, isn't going to let you roll it through, do not force it. You will break your machine. So I'd also lightly misted the cardstock, by the way, before I you know, started embossing. And then I die cut using the coordinating wafer die. I die cut some just Ranger watercolor paper. I've shown this other ways. Like usually I will emboss, then I will die cut the little coordinating area and then I'll emboss it a second time because after you've um, die cut, the pressure from the plates will flatten out that detail, the raised detail from the embossing. Um, so like my previous way, it's a little more work. You know, you have to do it a couple times. It doesn't really bother me, but you can do it this way too. You can die cut first. I still lightly misted it. And then I taped the die cut in place with just Simon's very, very low tack tape. That's literally what it's called. And it is, it's perfect for this because adding pressure, even low tack tapes, a lot of times it, the pressure will like fuse it to the cardstock. This didn't. So I use the tape just to hold it in place because this is a very delicate little die cut. And then I put it in my embossing folder and ran it through and then removed it. And it's got all this detail, which is really hard to show when it's white on white on camera. <laughs> but I'm going to enhance this in a second. So I've got my little coordinating die cut and I decided I wanted to color it with oxide inks. And I'm just using my little waffle flower detail blending brushes. So I have the detail one, that's this size that I'm using right now. And then the detail zero, which is just teeny tiny. I can get right in there. I love these brushes. I've shown them in many videos. I just, I can like just get right into, you know, things like this, add color with my ink pads and I'm good to go. I've shown in other videos with these embossing folders and die cuts and whatnot. Like you can Copic color, you can watercolor, like the sky's the limit. So this time I wanted to use oxide inks because why not? So I used um, mustard seed first on the petals and then on the center I just used some ground espresso and then for the rest of the petals I'm using chipped sapphire. Now with a die cut like this it, and specifically blending um, the because the petals obviously overlap some of the leaves it gets a little bit mm, but that's also why I chose oxide inks because you have a little more wiggle room to blend things and you know layer things and all that sort of thing so I just use those brushes and just got you know right in there and added my colors so for the greenery I'm using peeled paint and then I'll add rustic wilderness so I use peeled paint with the larger blending brush and just add that color and then I go in with the little tiny baby blending brush and the rustic wilderness and then I just go back and forth with those two greens you know blend them out until I'm happy with it quick, easy, makes a mess. You can work on some scrap paper. I don't, I just wipe this off, you know, my work surface off when I'm done. <laughs> so this was an, another one of those things. Cause I know a lot of people, you know, if you don't like to color, cause I know some people don't doing the whole, like ink, adding ink with ink blending and getting that like shading and, and layering sort of a look, but not having to actually color. This is a decent option for that in my opinion. And I find it just as therapeutic as coloring. So after I was done the die cut, the background that I had embossed, I trimmed it down to slightly smaller than my A2 card base. And then I took some peacock feathers, distress oxide ink, and just a larger blending brush and just added that kind of around the perimeter and I'll lightly kind of blend it on top of the, the raised areas. It's again, very subtle, especially as it dries because it's kind of tone on tone, but that's what I was going for. 
And then to adhere my floral little die cut here, I added some thin foam squares and then popped that right on top of the same floral shape there. And then of course I'm gonna add splatter. So I'm gonna use uh, some Distress Mica Stain. I was going on about this in my last video, the Halloween one. This is the Harvest Moon Mica Stain. It's beautiful, it is limited edition. Um, specifics about mica stains again i went into it in my last video and then of course tim holtz has an entire halloween uh ranger 2022 video with all the info but with this i shook it up really really well and then i just put some on my little plastic palette there and then picked it up with my fan brush and added splatter doesn't look like much at the moment i'll show at the end of the video with you know tilt it in the light and everything but it's got this perfect just pretty yellow shimmery splatter so lovely love it anyway set that aside for my sentiment i'm using the all about you stamp set and i just have a scrap of white cardstock here in my misty i use my anti sack powder tool and then i'm going to ink up the stamp with the chipped sapphire distress oxide ink and i'm going to stamp this a couple times and because oxide inks have the pigment in them they take just a little bit longer to dry so you can heat emboss with them and I'm going to heat emboss with Prize Ribbon Distress Embossing Glaze. You could just use clear. It'll, it's similar. I just, I have all these embossing glazes. I like using them. And it does make it just, just a touch more blue. It's, it's subtle, you know. But coated it with that embossing glaze. And then melted that with my heat tool. Once this was melted, I am going to die cut it with the coordinating wafer die. And then while I was doing this, I was like, I need to add a little bit more yellow to my card, like for this challenge. So I took a scrap of cardstock, the Simon's Sunshine cardstock, and then I pulled out my oldie but goodie diagonal stripe stencil. This has been out for eons. And I can't even remember the last time I used a stencil, but the last time I used it, I used pixie spray on the back. People have asked me about that. When I use pixie spray on my stencils, I don't specifically wash the pixie spray off. Like if it's still on there, that's great. And I just store it back in the packaging, just how I store my stencils. And yeah, pulled this out. It's still got a little bit of tack to it, not a lot, but it was enough. And then with stencils like this that are, you know, have very long open areas or anything like that, apply your inks, your paste, whatever, in the direction of the stencil so that things aren't moving around. So I just applied the um, mustard seed oxid ink with that little detail blending brush in the direction the stencil went. And it's going to be a very subtle sort of tone on tone, but that's what I wanted. I didn't want it to be super busy. So applied that to the cardstock. I wiped off my stencil. There's still that little bit of tack left on there from the pixie spray, which is fine. That'll be great the next time I'll pull it out to use it. So clean that off. I'll just put it right back on the packaging. I always put kind of the sticky side facing the, the packaging. The packaging isn't, um, it has that little bit of a coating on it. So it's perfect. So did that. Trim down a little just a teeny little strip just from a scrap of some navy cardstock, adhered that together. And then once I was happy with that, I just kind of made a little mark with my fingernail. And then I'm just gonna cut this on an angle with my paper trimmer. So that way I can just get those colors, you know, in and it'll also help kind of ground the sentiment. So going to adhere that into place with some craft tacky glue. And then once that's adhered, I'm going to use more of those little thin foam squares to pop up the sentiment. So after I've got the sentiment in place, I'm going to use that same um, All About You stamp set for the inside of my card. So my card base is white, Simon Smooth White cardstock. It'll be a top folding A2 card, so four and a quarter by five and a half. So I put the card base inside my Misty again. And then I'm going to line up another sentiment from that All About You stamp set. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment with that same chip sapphire ink. Just ink that up. Stamped a couple times because it's a thicker sentiment. So make sure I got a good impression. And then I took the two little hearts that are in the set because it was just meant to be. And ink those up with the peacock feathers and mustard seed inks. Stamp that. And then let that dry for just a little bit. And then I'm going to adhere my card front to the card base with craft tacky glue. And of course, I'm going to add a little bit more bling. 
So I've got some little uh, lemon jewels from uh, Little Things by Lucy's Cards. So sprinkled those around my little flower and sentiment here. And then once I was happy with that, I'll adhere those into place with craft tacky glue. And then I'm going to pair this card with a soft navy envelope from Simon. And that finishes it all off. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, I will link to the color throwdown challenge if you guys want to check it out because it's it's all just for fun. You know, people can just play along if they'd like. And of course, I will link to all the supplies I use. So you can check that out in the description box below the video. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, and especially thumbs upping and commenting. The thumbs upping and commenting more than anything helps a ton. It tells the robot overlords that you guys like the content I make and that more people will hopefully actually see it, you know? So I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.